Hi, my name is Zach Willard and I'm a technical consulting engineer for Tax Data Center Stripe. Today I will be discussing the requirements needed to make DHCP work in a VXLAN environment. I will not be going into detail about how to configure VXLAN, so you must be familiar with the fundamentals first. This video will cover the requirements needed for DHCP relay over VXLAN using non-VPC VTEPs, VPC VTEPs, and VPC VTEPs using fabric peering. I will be referring to the Nexus devices responsible for the encapsulation and decapsulation of VXLAN traffic as VTEPs and LEAFs interchangeably. First, let's go over the requirements needed for DHCP relay over VXLAN with non-VPC VTEPs. Non-VPC VTEPs require a unique loopback interface to source the DHCP relay from. This interface must be in the tenant VRF that you have assigned to the Anycast gateway that is doing the DHCP relay function. Let's look at the behavior we experience when DHCP re relay is configured without a unique loopback on a non-VPC VTEP. We will be using VLAN 100 as our DHCP relay. Since it is extended over VXLAN, it is configured as an Anycast gateway and is using 192.168.1.254 as its DHCP server. Here is the topology we will be using. The DHCP client is connected off of LEAF 1 and the DHCP server is connected off of LEAF 4. The DHCP client will start off the DHCP process by sending out a discover. This is the first step in the discover, offer, request, acknowledge process, or DORA for short. It is sent out as a layer 2 broadcast with a source IP of 0000, since the client has not received an IP. LEAF1 will receive the DHCP discover broadcast and create a relay packet for it. This relay packet is sourced from the Anycast gateway by default. After the relay packet has been created, it will then be encapsulated in an outer IP header and sent over the VXLAN fabric towards its destination. After traversing the fabric, the relay packet will egress LEAF4 towards the DHCP server in VLAN 100. Once the DHCP server processes the discover relay, it will generate an offer in response. This offer will be sent back to the source IP of the discover relay packet received earlier. The source IP for the Discover Relay packet received earlier was the Anycast Gateway IP. This means that it lives in multiple places, including the DHCP server's default gateway. This means that the packet could be black holed by any VLAN 100 interface that is not owned by LEAF1. The DHCP offer must go back to the LEAF that originated the Discover Relay. To fix the behavior described in the last few slides, we need to configure a unique loopback on each VTEP. This loopback interface should be separate from any other interfaces used for underlay routing. It is its own interface. The loopback should be placed in the same VRF that your Anycast gateway is on. It should also be redistributed into VGP so the rest of the VTEPs in the fabric know how to get to it. This is usually done with tags. After the unique loopback is configured, it is also necessary to define it as the source interface for your DHCP relay. This is done under the Anycast gateway interface. Now that the unique loopback is used to source the DHCP relay packets, we can see that there is only one device that owns the IP that the DHCP server will respond to. This makes sure that the DHCP replies will be forwarded to the correct VTEP. Next, we will be discussing some additional requirements when using VPC VTEPs. Here are the requirements for VPC VTEPs to act as DHCP relays. Legacy VPC VTEPs have the additional requirement of backup routing over the peer link. The unique loopback requirement is not going to be discussed since it was covered already. These requirements will be explained in further detail in upcoming slides. The requirement for advertised PIP and advertised virtual RMAC is needed for the same reason as the unique DHCP loopback. By default, VPC VTEPs advertise their Type 5 routes using the NVE virtual IP. This IP is shared between them and allows for redundant paths for traffic. Since the DHCP server replies should not go back to a VTEP it is not intended for, we need to advertise the DHCP loopback using the NVE primary IP. The advertise pip command allows for the loopback prefix to be advertised with the next hop of the VPC VTEP's NVE primary IP. This will make sure that the DHCP server replies cannot accidentally go to the other VPC peer who did not originate the relay packets. Here is an example of what could happen without advertise pip enabled. A DHCP offer has been encapsulated and is being sent over the VXLAN fabric. The inner header has a destination IP of 192.168.2.1. This means that it is meant for VTAP1. Since VTAP1 does not have an advertised PIP enabled, 
It advertised reachability to its DCP loopback using the NVE virtual IP 10.0.0.3. This IP is also owned by VTAP2, so the DHCP offer could end up at the wrong VTAP. Here is an example of how it looks when Advertised PIP and Advertised Virtual RMAC are enabled. Since VTAP1 is now advertising its DHCP loopback with the NVE primary IP, VTAP3 will encapsulate the DHCP offer with a destination IP of 10.0.0.1, which is only owned by VTAP1. Here is the configuration for enabling Advertised PIP and Advertised Virtual RMAC. The NVE interface must be shut down before configuring Advertised PIP and Advertised Virtual RMAC. After configuring the two commands, do a no shut on the NVE interface. These steps should be done in a maintenance window as the VTAP will not be able to forward VXLAN traffic while the NVE interface is down. If this is done on a VPC primary device, it will also bring down the NVE interface of the secondary VPC due to a type 1 inconsistency. Backup routing is required for a scenario where DHCP clients and the DHCP server are connected to the same VPC VTAP. Due to the nature of VPC, responses from the DHCP server can hash to either VPC peer. In the case that it hashes to the wrong VPC peer, backup routing gives the VPC peer a route to forward the DHCP packet over the peer link. If this is not done, the DHCP packet will be encapsulated and forwarded to the VPC peer over the fabric, which is currently unsupported. The VLAN used for the backup routing must be allowed over the peer link and cannot be extended over VXLAN. This means that it is not associated with an L2VNI or L3VNI. The SVI used for backup routing should be in the tenant VRF of your DHCP relay. This requirement is not needed for VPC VTEPs using fabric peering. Here is an example of the configuration needed for backup routing. First, we add a VRF instance for our tenant VRF under OSPF. After that, we create a VLAN SVI and the tenant VRF and add it to OSPF. Again, this VLAN should be allowed over the peer link and not extended over VXLAN. After creating the backup routing adjacency over the peer link, we need to make sure that our DHCP loopback is also advertised over the peer link. In this example, we simply add it to OSPF. This will give our VPC peers a path to forward DHCP server packets to each other that is not over the fabric. This concludes our discussion on DHCP over VXLAN. For further information and our most current recommendations, please visit the documentation in the description below.